Uh, so let's start with some simple examples to see what we even mean by model understanding and how it can be helpful in a few different scenarios, right? Uh, so here is a scenario where, let's say there is a predictive model, which takes as input some images and it uh, classifies them into different animal categories based on what animal is present in that image, right? So in this case, we see an input image of a Siberian Husky, and this model is, in fact, correctly classifying this image as Siberian Husky. So far, everything seems great, right? But if we probe this a little bit more deep, and if somehow we were able to see what are the parts of the image that the model is looking at when making this prediction, then we might have more insight into if the model is really doing or looking at the right things when making its predictions, right? So in this case, what we see is that the model is in fact looking at the snow in the image in order to make this prediction, which means what we have built is a snow detector and not really a husky detector or an animal classifier in this case. So the model is using spurious features or incorrect features in order to make this prediction, which means even if on your current data set, your model might be showing reasonable accuracy, if you deploy it in a real world application, uh, you know, out there with like, let's say all the images on the internet being inputs to such a model, then it's going to be inaccurate, right? Because essentially it's looking for snow in images and trying to uh, label animals based on that. So in this case, model understanding is helping us with debugging. And this is a use case that I'm sure several of us can relate to as model developers and engineers and scientists, where understanding model behavior is helping us figure out what is wrong with our models and now you know is asking us or in this case telling us to go and fix something in our training data or in the model training process itself in order to make sure the model is looking at the right features right even though this example is not precisely from like a healthcare scenario or like a financial scenario or you know banks and lending scenarios it can still help us understand the value as just people who are used to building models uh, and developing them okay uh, now let's take a second example where let's say there is a predictive model that is being used to predict if a defendant is too risky to release on bail uh, again, there are, before I go any further, I just want to flag that there are lots of ethical issues with using models like these in order to predict how risky somebody is for different, you know, things and so on. Uh, but that said, there have also been such pre-trial risk assessment tools in the past, including the very famous or the infamous Compass, uh, you know, data set and uh, the tool developed using that. Uh, that uh, the courts and judicial systems have used in the past in order to assess the risk associated with releasing someone on bail, right? I just want to highlight how explanations or model understanding can help us mitigate some of the risks associated with these kinds of tools, right? So for example, let's say there is a predictive model which ingests defendant details, for example, their demographics, their past criminal records, and so on, uh, and makes a prediction of if that defendant is risky to release or not. Uh, so if the judge just looks at this kind of a prediction, there is very little that they can know or understand how much to rely on this prediction, right? So they just see a prediction, they don't know what to do with it, how much to trust it. But if we were to provide them a deeper understanding of, for example, let's say the top three features that are driving this prediction, then they'll be able to figure out if and how much to rely on such a prediction, right? So in this case, the top three features are turning out to be race, gender, and past crimes. Uh, and when a judge looks at this, he or she can easily say that uh, the model is relying on features such as race and gender, which are protected attributes and should not be used in predictions like these. And therefore, they cannot rely on this model's prediction and they need to make their own decision in this case, right? So in this case, uh, model understanding has helped the judge figure out uh, or at least see what are the biases that are involved in the model and if the model is using the right kinds of features when making the predictions, right? Uh, and similarly, 
if we were to think about a, a scenario in healthcare where a doctor is looking at a bunch of predictions output by a predictive model, again, the question is, uh, she does not really know which ones to trust and which ones to rely on and which ones to not trust and make her own decisions on. In this case, if someone were to provide her with like a global understanding of what this model is doing, for example, in this case, uh, if the gender is female, the model is relying on ID numbers to determine who is sick. And if the gender is male, the model is relying on symptoms such as cold and cough to determine who is sick. Uh, looking at such an understanding will tell the doctor that while the model seems seems to be uh, looking at the right kinds of features. In the case of male patients, the same is not true for female patients, so I should not trust the model on the female patients, right? If a similar understanding was available for, you know, a regulatory authority, uh, which determines if a model is ready to be deployed at a broader scale, then looking at this, they can determine that, well, the model is using irrelevant features on at least, you know, half or close to half of the population. So it's not ready for broader deployment yet, right? So in this case, model understanding is helping us wet models to determine if they're suitable for deployment in the real world, okay? All right. So it seems like there are lots of use cases that we already discussed in just a handful of examples. For example, debugging, bias detection, you know, if and when to trust model predictions, wetting models to assess suitability for deployment, and in the process, model understanding can serve a variety of st stakeholders such as end users, you know, who are at the receiving end of model predictions, decision makers such as doctors and judges, regulatory agencies, and researchers and engineers, right? So there are a wide variety of stakeholders and use cases that model understanding can help with, okay? So hopefully with these examples and some of this motivation, uh, I convinced you to some degree that there is some value to model understanding and especially in scenarios where important decisions are being made.